Welcome into Training Camp Report presented by Frontier. Casey Phillips alongside Sergeant Major Matt Parrish of the U.S. SOCOM Para Commandos because today is Military Appreciation Day. So, Matt, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us, Casey. We're always excited to come out and be with the Bucks, uh, whether it's preseason training camp or actually during the season. Uh, always excited. So, yeah. thanks for having us. And this is great. They already yeah. jumped in this morning before practice, quite a way to kick things off. Yeah. And we just wanted to hear from you a little bit about what it is like to do one of these jumps what goes into it because we all just oh, yeah. get to enjoy yeah. the end product but i know there's got to be so much on the back end so whether it's jumping into practice here yeah. or during the games at Absolutely. raymond james stadium what goes into that uh, a ton of practice so we all all of us that are on the pair of commanders we have real jobs in special <laughs> operations command but we do this on you know weekends and make sure we maintain our proficiency that, so that we can hit the logo just like andy did right there uh during last year's uh bucks game so you know there's a ton of practice that goes into it you've got to have you know over five 500 jumps to even sniff coming into one of these uh, uh, wow. events, but most of our guys have got over two or 3,000 jumps wow. of really just practice, practice, practice to make sure, uh, you know, a, a football field's a big thing, Casey, but when you're looking at it from a mile up, it looks like a postage stamp, yeah. especially when you think about like Ray J where you've, you're looking and it's just downtown Tampa yeah. and then you're like, oh, okay, there it is. Yeah. Uh, I got to get in there. Uh, otherwise I'm in trouble. That's uh, so it's a, it's a great opportunity. You know, we get to go across the country and represent SOCOM to all these different sporting events, but it's always amazing for us when we can come to our home city uh, since we're stationed just down the road. So awesome opportunity to be out here for Military Appreciation Day. Uh, you know, we got a lot of friends, family, vets, active duty folks uh, here for training camp. So just an awesome opportunity for sure. Yeah. And what is that like for you guys to have such a close partnership with an NFL team? Because there are a lot of military yeah. bases that, that don't have that nearby. And, yeah. and to have one here that I know the Bucks will go to McDill and then yeah. you guys get to come to our games and then having days like this. What does that mean to you guys? It's very cool. You know, last year when we were here, uh, you know, I, I co-host our podcast, our official podcast for SOCOM. We got a chance to interview Ryan Jensen and a couple of people just – it's very cool to have sort of that professional relationship, but also uh, on sort of a player operator level of just, you know, hey, what they do is incredibly cool. What we do is pretty cool as well. And being able to kind of do that kind of back and forth is really cool. And like you said, Casey, I mean, so we've got a lot of places where people are stationed that there aren't sports around. You know, I spent most of my career in the panhandle and up in North Carolina. We didn't have a pro sports team nearby. So being able to be here and have such a cool relationship with the Bucks is just, it's awesome, you know. Raymond James Stadium is where we do our practice for stadiums in the off season. You know, they let us come in there and uh, and and get some reps to make sure we're ready for the season. So it's just always a, an awesome opportunity to uh, you know. Uh, everywhere we go is great, but obviously in your home city, when you've got a ton of folks from SOCOM that are season ticket holders or have tickets to the games, uh, you know, every time I'm either on the mic or we hit the ground, whatever, you know, your phone's just blowing up from all the people who are like, hey, you guys look great, you know, so it's just, it's super fun. Yeah, you since know? you are the one that's yeah. on the mic a lot, you're one of the few people that can relate to the struggles with my job, <laughs> with the delay from the, oh, the speakers Absolutely. and having to talk in front of a stadium yeah. full of people. And what is the most challenging part for you of, A, you're having to narrate for quite a long time and especially if something yeah. maybe delays them a little bit and yeah. trying to time it perfectly from when they get in there and like I said the delay oh, yeah. talking in front of thousands of people what has that been like for you yeah it's fun you know uh, Raymond James is actually not terrible as far as delay I won't say the worst ones uh, in <laughs> case somebody gets mad but if there's in the a division you can yeah, say no you can say. <laughs> no they're not <laughs> there's a couple places that have like full two second delays oh my gosh. and if you ever actually think about what you're hearing you're just done, you're done right? yeah so you have to just really be tracked in uh, it's been amazing you know I I I never, you know, I never would have thought to have a microphone in a stadium, you know, doing places like uh, LSU with 103,000 people at night and they're all screaming and uh, it's just incredible. I mean, the energy, I mean, you know, you're there right by the pirate ship every night, you know that energy or every game, excuse me, you know that energy and it's just, it's electric and to be able, you know, in a place like Tampa that's so military friendly to be able to bring in the American flag, bring in the Bucks flag, bring in the POW MIA flag. And, uh, you know, we just got such an awesome home crowd that they are just incredible when we come in and there's no better way you know last year we were lucky we got to jump into a monday night football game and a sunday night football game and so everybody's already keyed up and then boom we bring the flags in and everybody's just going nuts 
And then right after that, player intros, everybody, you know, the Bucks are taking the field. And uh, it's just an incredible opportunity. You know, this year uh, on November 6th, we're jumping in when the Rams come back into As town. As if there wasn't already yeah, enough to be excited ex about. Exactly. NFC Championship rematch, time for the revenge tour. Yes. Uh, you know, I was lucky enough to be in the stadium last year and see the comeback. And we all thought it was, it was you coming. know, another so this story. this is it. Yeah. This is the year so, you guys jumping in. That's going to be what oh, does man. it. Well, Matt, thank you so much yeah. for joining us. And, of course, thank you for your service and everything you guys do for this community. Absolutely. No, thank you all. And thanks to everybody at the Bucks that lets us uh, come by and do this. We really enjoy it. Thanks, awesome. Casey. All right. Well, we are going to take a quick break. Check out these highlights from yesterday's practice. Logan Hall, defensive line, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The hometown, I would say, is Belton, Texas. Growing up, um, I was a military child, so I moved around, bounced around a lot. As far as my family, you know, really great family, really great support system. Got a lot of love and admiration for what they did uh, for me growing up. You know, my first sport was soccer, then I went to t-ball, and eventually track and field kind of became my first love. Spent the most time doing that. And obviously as I grew into like the bigger I am now, that kind of wasn't in the cards for me. So transitioned to D-line and I've been playing football for a long time now. I just got older, got more mature, my body matured, my mind matured. So, but yeah, the game really did slow down for me, 100%. It brings a number of things, you know, it's uh, stress relief, you know, stability, routine, relationships, camaraderie, challenges. It brings it brings everything. Another day, another dollar. It's good to be home. I'm really excited to, you know, get sacks. But really excited, you know, to work with the guys like Vita Vea, Will Golston, a lot of the outside backers we have. I think we have a lot of talent amongst the rushers from a technique standpoint. Those guys are really vets and professionals, and they display that on the field. And not even just, you know, asking questions, just watching them and seeing how they perform and do things. I've learned a whole bunch in my short time here. Welcome back into Training Camp Report presented by Frontier. Casey Phillips alongside senior writer and editor Scott Smith. And now we are going to check out our Ticketmaster play of the day from the last practice here. And we had Blaine Gabbert airing it out to Jalen Darden. I, I will say I've, me I've seen Darden make a few pretty good catches so far at this camp. Yeah, just on that one in particular, um, I think Sean Murphy Bunny tried to make a diving stop, and, and it's hard to it's hard to make that catch, and he's extending for it when you've got that hand, you know, crossing in front of your right. face. So no, he's I think he's looked pretty good. A lot of the receivers have really. Yeah, which is a great problem to have. It is. <laughs> just yeah. a embarrassment of riches at that <laughs> position now. Uh, so I know that we have talked a lot about the receivers and, and the O line, certain positions a lot more than others, and one that I don't think we've given a whole lot of uh, time to so far has been the interior linebackers, the inside linebackers, because. They're just you so really stable. Have to. Yeah, like yeah. they're just so stable. But that doesn't mean they're not a really big deal and a really par big part <laughs> of this defense. And training camp can be so much about the unknowns. But these are a couple guys that we know who's starting, we know who's playing. But right. let's talk a little bit about Devin White and and maybe the the hopes and expectations for him this year. Yeah, I know Devin White. He's personally, I think he's really trying everything he can to have a really big year this year. And I don't think he was satisfied with his season last year. And a lot of that wasn't necessarily his fault. You know, the big plays weren't necessarily there. Some of that had to do with injuries, especially Le Levante's injury that caused the Buccaneers to sort of switch up what they do on defense a little bit. He was kind of in a different role, and he wasn't in a role that necessarily was as conducive to big plays as when everybody's healthy and they're playing the way they want to play. So if you look at this here, I, this is a little unfair. I don't want to overdo it here because the first column is 2019 and 20 together compared to 2021. But the overall picture I'm trying to give you here is that over his first two seasons, you know, take the good and the bad, whatever he was doing, he was doing well. He was a second team all pro in his second year. But there were a lot of big plays, mm -hmm. 11 and a half sacks, the force fumbles, the fumble recoveries, the tackle for loss. 
And last year, you see, there was no forced fumbles. There was one fumble recovery, no interception, um, 3.5 sacks, which is really good for an inside linebacker. Right. But he had nine the year before. The one thing that was there was the quarterback hits. And, and one thing that he's talked about is when he, he's so good at blitzing the quarterback that when he gets in there, he needs to make sure he converts those into sacks. And sometimes he's just flying right by the guy or just right. making slight contact. So, But the main thing that he's been talking about in order to unlock those big plays again for him, we know he's very confident mm -hmm. in, his, in his athletic skills, as he should be. He's yeah. incredibly athletic. But he says it's the mental part of the game that he has to develop. And uh, that's what he's he's been talking about that ever since uh, minicamp. That's what he's focusing on this year, really um, sharpening the mental part of his game because he wants to be able to anticipate rather than read what they're doing and react. He wants to figure out what they're doing before they start and get there a lot quicker. So, you know, if he could be successful in that effort, you know, he really could have a giant year. Yeah, what have we seen? You mentioned a little bit about when Levante <clears throat> went down, the way that affected Devin. So how did we learn things about how each of them can maybe help each other and what they look like yeah. together out there as compared right. to separate, just the ways that it lets each of them maybe be the best versions of themselves. Yeah, I think they had to play a lot more cover two than they wanted to after, you know, when Levante was either hurt or not at 100%. And it's the same thing we were talking about with uh, Antoine Winfield making his next step the next step in his progression is that um, knowing where your help is. And when Levante and Devin are out there together, they're both really, really good, obviously, but they also also played together a lot, so they know what the other one's going to be doing, and I think that helps. You know, that helps you when you have an opportunity for a big play to go and try to take advantage of it. Yeah, and I mean, Devin's been asked to wear the mic and yeah. wear a lot of hats for that defense and do a lot right out of the gate, and he wanted that. He, he always did. talked about yeah. that, but it is interesting to think back about how. There, ha there were some injuries to him and then Levante going down and it's getting used to the NFL, getting used to wearing the mic and all of that. It almost feels like this could be the first year that all those things kind of come together yeah. where he's he is so much more for the mental side, like you talked mm -hmm. about used to all of that and it's not none of it is new none anymore. Of it's new, right? yeah and yeah. not a new coordinator not a right. new any of that that this could be the first year where he's not having to really learn anything new just it's let just him loose, letting huh? him loose yeah, exactly yeah. do you feel like there are some what are the things about the rest and of this defense and i should say he was in the pro bowl last year right so yeah I, I wasn't trying to make it look yeah. like he had a bad season there yeah. i'm just following along with how his well line he of had, thinking yeah he, that he wants those big plays and mm -hmm. here's how he's going to get them and with the rest of the defense do you see there being other things that could help him in terms of people you've brought in on either side of him right. of you know new safeties you brought in new defensive linemen new everybody like just whatever else is going on in the defense around how do you see that potentially helping a guy like well, Devin? It, it, hopefully with logan hall and akeem hicks you can get some more pressure up the middle and if th those guys and, and then also with akeem hicks and when you have it in your in your base package akeem hicks and Vita Vea and Will Golston, that's a lot of human beings. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's hard to keep them all at bay. And they are, even if they're not getting to the quarterback, they're occupying a lot of blockers. So we've seen one of the best things that Devin does is, as we talked about the other day, I think, just being shot out of a cannon when he's blitzing the quarterback. Yep. So if more of those blockers are occupied, especially if Joe Tryon is giving people trouble on the edges, and we know what Shaq Bear can do, Joe's looked fantastic in this camp so far, just the more pressure and the more thought that the other team has to give to those guys in the front just frees up your linebackers. When you have really fast, rangy linebackers like Devin White and Levante David, that's ideally what you want. Yeah, I know we're going to talk more about Joe Tryon Shrink in the next segment, but you, you brought up Akeem Hicks and, and Vita Vea and just how much human that it's is up front. It's a lot of human <laughs> up front. And it was funny because there's a lot of times that to us, we see these guys and we're like, good grief, it's a large human. But what I thought was interesting is when Akeem Hicks first showed up on the practice field back in spring, that Rakeem Nunez Roches looked at him and I heard him say, some things that are not going to be TV appropriate, <laughs> but it, it was the the sentiment was that is a large human. That's just coming from, from Nacho. a fellow large he is human. Also a large human. It's just a matter of degrees. And huh? yes, and so to me, I'm like, okay, it's it's not just me. When I'm hearing Nacho say this, Akeem is a big guy, yeah. and yet we've seen that it it is. I mean, still athletic. Same thing with Vita. That it's it's one thing to just be big, but what those guys can bring in terms of also their athleticism and everything that they can do. Yeah. What have you seen about the way that this of having that kind of front you think is we talked about it affecting Devin, but just what that could mean for this defense. And, and we know they've prided themselves so much on, on run stopping yeah. and all of that. Do that's you see that the, continuing? That's where I was going to start, because over the last three years since Todd Ball's got here and this defense has been installed, the Buccaneers have, been, have had over the course of the full three years, the best defense in the league. And they finished first in 19 and first in 2020. And they were first through half 
60 percent of last year really through the first half of last season they were doing just just stifling the run some teams didn't even hardly try to run against us but if you look at the numbers down the stretch it really fell off and teams were running the ball quite well against the bucks over the last say six weeks they still finished third it was still good overall but there was definitely a drop off and i know the Buccaneers would like to get back to that because the goal for every game going into it is take away the run so you can make them one dimensional and dimensional you know you're they're passing and you can go after the quarterback that's what they want to do so i think with akeem hicks fact factoring in now vita vea will golson remains a really good strong side uh, uh three four end um and then logan hall we'll see what he can add to the to the run stopping but i think they have the bodies in place obviously they have the scheme that can be one of the best run defenses in the league and i think that's a major goal all right. Well, we are already crazy to think about it. Basically, a weekend to training camp at this point. Uh, it's 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 insane. And so let's go and but take a look back. And yes, that is uh, that is always the exciting day. Today's the first day in pads. But let's take a look back real quick at our week one highlights. We getting ready for so. It means so. Hey, put your heart. Every time you step on this field, man, we got to stand up. I speed. Get out. Hit, hit, hit. Two, three, three. Two. Back right there. Good. Oh, where you can be? Yes, sir. playing a video game. I'm juiced up personally, you know, we've got a lot of weapons. Great players want to play with other great players. You know, I think uh, that speaks for itself. Andre Anthony, outside linebacker, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm from New Orleans. I went to high school at Edna Carr. Great school, you know, we, we're known for winning a lot of championships. So that championship mindset kind of always uh, was something that was instilled in me. My high school coach always told me adversity builds character, and I've been through a lot of adversity at LSU. I mean, just in my life in general, it's not playing, it's waiting my turn, it's an injury. Knowing how to be uh, a guy of high character and still keeping my head up regardless of the circumstances. Just watching the type of uh, player Devin was when he was at LSU, you know, the, the guy to fly around, he's always in every tackle, and just uh, the type of person he was off the field. So looking up to him was always like something big because that's what you want to follow, you know, that 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 type of leader. And let's go, let's have a great day. Bust up three, one, two, three. Bust. When I got here, uh, he already texted me. I um, mean, we, we had a conversation just of what to expect and what to look for. Even when, you know, when he came back to LSU to talk to us, he was he called me out in a team meeting, like, you know, do you know how it's supposed to be done? And I took that as a challenge, uh, you know, me and, me and Devin had a, a real close relationship. Watching those guys like Joe, um, I've always watched Shaq when, uh, when I was in uh, college. Um, so just being around those guys and just watching them practice and how they practice, just kind of taking all the tools and getting as much as I can from them, just really being a sponge. For me, it's just be me, still be me, do the best I can to find my, my way, you know, whether it's special teams or defense, you know. It's kind of get one of those, get in where you fit in and just do my best. I mean, if it's one play, two plays, I'm gonna give you the best I can. And if I do, I'm gonna celebrate it like it's, it's my last play, so. <laughs> Welcome back into Training Camp Report presented by Frontier. Casey Phillips here with senior writer and editor Scott Smith. And as always, we are here to give you all the topics going on in the uh, entire training camp here. I mean, there's so much we can talk about. It's so funny how we have not hit the point yet where I feel like we've talked about everything, but this is a really interesting team this year. And we just met Andre Anthony in the Meet the Rookies segment, and I think he's going to be an interesting one to watch. But I know we talked about Joe Tryon Trinka is a guy that was asked to do a lot of really interesting things last year in his first year and coming back in we, we tend to talk about there being a, a jump and growth a lot of times for guys between year one and year two so what did you notice that joe brought last year and then what do you think the team kind of hopes to do with him this year is it is there a chance it could be a little bit more specific or is yeah. he still maybe going to be thrown around a little bit yeah, in joe's case uh that second year leap could be a, for a couple reasons one just for every player that comes in the league that first year is quite an adjustment and then you get a full off season with your team rather than just after the draft and so there's a lot of you know, you've adjusted to the NFL, but also in his case, the um, potential job that he's going to be asked to do is different, and that might give him more of an opportunity. Last year, 
you know, he's our first round draft pick. He was, they wanted to get him on the field as much as possible, but you had Shaq and you had JPP, you had Anthony Nelson. So one of the ways they got him on the field a little bit more was to use him in a bunch of different roles, you know, coming off the edge, worked him a little in, in the interior. Sometimes he had to drop off the ball a little bit. So it was, he had to learn a lot of things and that was tough for a rookie. That made it hard. And also it, it made it harder for him to focus on one thing. This year, I think he's focusing on playing primarily left end, and that's going to help him a lot. And out here on the practice field, admittedly, you can never know for exactly sure, but it sure looks like he's coming around the edge really fast. I've seen him get around the edge quickly on a variety of different tackles out here. I don't want to name names because, it, like you said, every every good thing for one side is bad for the other, right? But right. Um, he's looked he's looked really explosive and. The, that whole position is going to be interesting because basically the Buccaneers, I think they like to keep five of them. Mm. And with JPP not coming back, pretty much everybody just moves up a spot. So Joe Shaq's already there, but Joe Tryon comes in the starter. Anthony Nelson becomes your third guy in your rotation instead of your fourth guy. Cam Gill becomes your fourth guy in your rotation. And Coach said the other day that they're very – they're very confident in those four, but they probably are going to try to fight a fifth guy, and Andre, Andre Anthony could be one of them. Right. But getting back here to um, Joe, you can see here the number of snaps that he had. Now, JPP snaps at 601 doesn't take into effect into account that he missed a lot of time at the right, end of the season. Right, it would have been a lot more. So if you figure Joe's sh snaps are a little more in line with what Shaq did last year, that's a couple hundred more snaps, and uh, and you can see how his production is probably going to go up. 4.0 sack was not a terrible output for a rookie. That's that's it's not bad. It's a good start. But right. I think the Buccaneers hope they can get a little closer to double digits this year. The way he looks coming off the edge makes me confident that could happen. And then just the fact that he's going to get more playing time. Yeah, I saw Cam Gill on that uh, thing. I, I thought he's an interesting guy because talk about a you know an underdog kind yeah. of guy coming in here. But he's one of those that somehow just you put him out there and he makes things happen. Yeah, and he also helps on special teams too, mm -hmm. which is helpful. But yeah, I think he's from Wagner. Yeah. I don't know. If there's yeah, been a lot undrafted of NFL guy from and yeah, I mean came in in a COVID year as an undrafted yeah, guy right. and still made, and made it happen. made the roster right out of the gate. He actually hasn't had to spend any time on the practice squad. He made the, the active roster as a rookie and has been there for two full seasons. Now, there have been lots of times when he hasn't been getting a whole lot of playing time, but, I mean, he had a half a sack in the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's you know, incredible. That was his first sack ever, and it came in the Super Bowl. I mean, I mean if that, you're going to do it. <laughs> what a note, right? Not too shabby a timing. All right, well, that is going to do it for us today on Training Camp Report presented by Frontier. We have loved having military appreciation out here as well. We will be back here with another Training Camp Report tomorrow morning, so we hope to see you then.